Good evening, everyone. I am Mark, your fat friend. And I'm James, your black friend. And this is the Fat and Black Connection. Where we talk about anything and everything. Mm, well. Well, you know, as long as it's interesting to us, of course, so. Naturally. And today, <laughs> today we've got some interesting things to talk about. Special episode. Now, bear in mind, this is, as always, a live and interactive broadcast. What does that mean, James? Live and uh, interactive. That means that we are live on what? Facebook? Mm-hmm. YouTube, mm -hmm. Twitch, Twitter, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, what is that, Ustream or whatever? Uh, sure, Daily Motion, but okay. Daily Motion, sorry, I couldn't remember what you, I don't remember all of them anymore. Uh, but anyways, wherever you're watching, please leave a comment. We love to know what you're thinking, what you think of the show. If you have any questions, we, you know, sometimes we pull from there. So we want to know what you're, you're, that you're there. We want to make sure uh, we engage with you. Absolutely. And this is a special episode, a very special episode. We have three, count them, one, a two, a three guests. <laughs> uh, so before Mr. we Owl. get going, I, I, this is a big one. So I figured I needed a four pack of some Steve Weisers. Um, so I'm going to crack into one. Oh, White Claw. Yeah, why not? Let's, uh, let's get this thing going. Hold on, hold on, hold on one sec. Oh, my bad. Oh, hey. man, I'm thirsty. Hey, hey. Cheers. All right. All right. All right, <laughs> so uh, this is a very special episode uh, because that's not our logo up there. No, nope, not, this, not this week. This is the Murphy's Inc. special. Special. So we've got uh, we've got the creator uh, of the show, uh, Mr. William Chan. He'll be coming on in just a couple minutes. There you go. Uh, and, and we have our two writers uh who wrote the whole thing season one uh tara and austin they'll be joining us as well um, oh yeah this is gonna be a fun one um yeah are you are you excited to uh, i'm just i'm I, I mean i i've already i've been working on the show now it's just gonna be interesting to uh you know see it all in action you know to, to see how it came to be and all that so sure sure so you i assume you know you're so great at the show prep i'm sure you've taken the time to uh get some questions ready right <laughs> no that's adorable so i guess we're just gonna wing it is what you're saying bro have we have we pretty much we, uh, we i think we have we haven't had an interview with somebody in a while so we've just been winging it the entire time anyway so sure sure um all right well uh, i i i have a few i have a few questions but we'll 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 get to that when we get to that all right so uh i i was thinking and you tell me what you think i was thinking let's start off right off the bat let's bring in the creator champ let's uh, do it and and go from there. What do you think? I think that's a great idea, Mark. All right, Chan. I hope you're ready. I'm bringing you into the room. Hello, Chan, hello. How are you doing so, today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm Chan the Creator. Yes. <laughs> Chan Bow the before creator. him. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, Chan. I will. I, I would love it if you would just take a couple of minutes. Uh, tell us who you are, uh, where you are, and uh, what do you do. Yeah, sure. Um, so, I'm. My name is William Chan. Yep. I am currently in Adelaide, South Australia. So, like, I don't know how many hours from you guys, but yeah. Um, per, I, I, I think I identify as a student. I'm currently studying here. And um, yeah, I'm the creator. I, I've never heard of anyone identifying as a student, so that's interesting. Um, exactly. I'm pioneering a new wave of um, policy. I mean, ideology. Fair enough. So <laughs> is that a lifestyle choice? or? I, I mean, as you can Lifelong see. Lifelong learner. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, times are hard. So, you know, so that's, diverse, that's a classroom, or is that the entire school there in uh, Australia? Uh, nah, this is just my house, man. Oh, uh, okay. I'm not, not here to judge. So, stop hating. So, yeah, so, man. 
um, I, I, I gotta, I gotta know. So you, you're, you're in Adelaide, Australia. How did you, did you, are you purely there for school or yeah. something else that brought you there? Um, I got on a boat there. Oh, okay. Of there. Okay. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> I'm just studying here. <laughs> just been here for a year. Hey, so you're only there for a year. So is so it's a year abroad, I guess. No, no, no. I mean, I've been here for a year so far. Uh, no, he's so here. he's only been in Australia for a year. And, but yeah. you're going to be there for the remainder of your studies. Yeah. Do you like it so far? I mean, yeah, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. It's. I mean, well, it is winter time there now, so. Yeah, he's exactly right. It's pretty cold. Um, it's been raining. Yeah, now, now it is it is eight oh seven here on the Pacific Left Coast West Coast. Nothing but the best coast. Uh, what time is it there? Uh, it's about twelve thirty, thirty-seven. Uh, in, in the afternoon. PM. PM, yeah, in the afternoon. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm about to say. And dang. correct me if I'm wrong, but it is Thursday there. Yeah, I'm. Uh, so okay, so we we've talked about Murphy's Inc. on this show before, and that it involves yep. time traveling heists, so to speak. Um, do you personally feel like a time traveler since right now you're in the future? Um, <laughs> again, I feel like a time traveler. Uh, he is. Uh, he is. Yeah. So right. you want to hear today's lottery? Yes, oh. please. Oh, you got the numbers. Uh, as long as you've got the California numbers, because I'll go drive up to the border and buy yeah, me a right. lotto ticket. Uh, so, so, um, <laughs> yeah. So, Chan, tell tell us, um, Murphy Zinc, where did it come from? Like, how did you come up with the idea and and, and all of that kind of stuff? Um, so, started around December last year. I always, I was always curious. Well, I wanted to start like a writing, uh, like a creative writing project and audio drama just sounded like an easy avenue to actually write and make something. And um, what I, I used to like, every time I see like a time traveling show, I always feel like there's something that there's like some kind of plot holes, maybe. So uh, sometimes I would get annoyed at that, and I was like, maybe I can make a better show. And it turns out it's pretty hard to make a show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can, it's not like flipping a switch. Uh, I wish. Man. So yeah. I, you and I have had some interesting conversations uh, about the the development of the show, and that you originally you had posted this on to Reddit. Is that correct? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, and and while on Reddit, you, I, I went back and I read this post, and you, you had somewhat of an unrealistic timeline of how you saw everything developing. Can you kind of explain that to the audience? Uh, I mean, you know, I, I didn't... Most of it just came from inexperience, really. I uh, I just didn't have any I didn't have any expectations of how long things take. I've uh, it's my first time doing any like working with actors and um, like groups of people. Yeah, no, and it's it's not in any way like a, a bash. It's it's just interesting that your original thought for like a timeline was, I mean it. If I remember correctly, it was something like in basically three months going from more or less nothing to produced, so to speak, like ready to air, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So as you said, you started this back in December of uh, 21, right? And and yep. here we are. We're about six months or almost seven months later. Seven months, yeah. Um, and we still have not aired an episode yet. How you, I mean, how, stop hating. How do you feel about it? <laughs> yeah, that? stop hating. <laughs> no, but I mean, I mean, because because in your head at the time, yeah, you thought you it saw, was going to be, yeah, it was going to be bam, 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 and then so it is turned it, out to be not so much. But are do you still feel encouraged, or do you feel concerned that that here we are seven months later and it still hasn't been brought 
all the way done? Well, you know, there has been, you know, a couple of problems that came during the span of the seven months, but, you know, we're trying to make it work. But overall, and, uh, you feel good about the show. You feel yeah. like it's in. Just keep on keeping is on. Is it where you want it yeah. to be? Like, obviously, not from a timeline perspective, but when you first had your elevator pitch and your first thoughts on what the show would be, is it where you want it to be? Um. Yeah, I would say so. Um. I think the writers did a very good job of um, just building out like the first season. Um, you know, there's a lot of exciting moments. There's a lot of like thrilling moments, you know, moments that make you laugh. So overall, I think, yeah, exceeded my expectations writing wise. And, and you mentioned the writers, uh, tell us a little bit about how you put the team together. Cause we mentioned the Reddit post, but is that how you collaborated and brought all of this forward to where we are today or kind of tell us what that looked like yeah pretty much so if you don't know um reddit has like a lot of sub forums where just people gather around uh, if and that uh, you know you can make posts and comment like any other form so there's actually a dedicated uh reddit sub form uh for audio dramas in particular which has a lot of members so know, just posting cool. yeah yeah, it's pretty cool and like unexpectedly, you know, um, I posted there. I posted on like um, game development forums too, just to see if um, like you know if like there would be interested people there, and that's how I found um, you know uh, the writers we have. They reached out by email, and they're like. Um, can we work for you? I was like, yeah, sure. So, you know, <laughs> free labor. <laughs> well, and obviously that really speaks to Chan because as he said, you know, they work for him, not with him. Um, so, that, so that really speaks to the mentality of, of the creator. Uh, Chan the creator. Not, not, not under court of law. Ah, fair enough. Mm. So, okay, well, we do have the writers here with us. Which one would you like to bring out first? Uh, I would like to introduce my, um, my, my good friend, Austin. Austin, a, welcome yeah. to the show. Hello, hey, Austin. <laughs> so, Jan, tell us about Austin, how you met him, and uh, what brought him to you. Um, I do believe... Um, yeah, Austin was actually the first one to reach out, like on the day I posted it, I believe. And then I, and yeah, then I'm dedicated, like, dude. Yeah, and he, he had, since like, day one, exactly, yeah. dude. Day one ish. Yeah, day one ish. Dude, and this this man had like full professionalism. He sent me his resume and everything. I was like, <laughs> damn. Yeah. Yeah, I want to make sure I got in, man. There's a lot of writers out there. So Austin, tell us, you know, what attracted you to the project? Oh, because I was, um, like, I'd never really heard of a writer's, like, like, writers doing audio dramas. So I was like, what is an audio drama? Like, I heard of, uh, like, Amazon's, like, you know those audiobooks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I never heard of audio dramas. Like, people do these whole TV shows, basically just... You know, without the visuals and i was like oh that sounds really interesting because like i got a background in like fiction short stories uh like novel writing and that type of stuff but i never done any kind of like script writing before so i was like oh this seems really cool i want to try this oh oh wait wait so you had actually never written a script before nope <laughs> ah, you could have fooled me <laughs> <laughs> thank you so austin where are you Oh, I'm in Riverside, California. Okay. And what do you do? <laughs> like, what do I do as in like... Well, do you identify as a student, as Chan? Or a job? Or... Oh, I'm a, I'm a former student. Former okay. student. Okay. Yeah, no, I just graduated like a couple months ago. Or a month oh, ago. Congratulations. oh, congratulations. What did you get? Yeah. Uh, high school or what? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I graduated uh, middle school like last week. It's great. Oh, I can't wait for my high school. I can't Fresh... wait for my, the best days of my life. Freshman year coming up. Right on, yeah. right on. Uh, so, uh, 
what what kind of degree did you get? I got a degree in creative writing. Oh. Huh. And and Chan, you mentioned you're going to school. What did you what are you studying for? Uh, I'm studying for a bachelor's of science for biochemistry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yo, oh, Lord. G- mad genius out yeah. here. Chan the creator. He's gonna be creating some stuff. <laughs> exactly. In his evil lair. Um, his evil lair. <laughs> having never written anything before, uh, never written a script. I apologize. Script, yeah. um, what That's was that mad. like for you, it, learning that process? Uh, walk us through it a little bit. Yeah. So it was um, definitely a journey. <laughs> It wasn't that question for me. No, no it's no. my question. Oh, 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 my bad, my bad. <laughs> but you're welcome to share as well. So, Chan, how much writing have you done on the show? Um, I think I did like the first scenes, and I contribute some ideas. Ah, so ideas. you're more of the the pitch guy. He is the creator. He is the yeah, creator. the creator. Chan, Chan the creator. Uh, Actually, so. Hey, so uh, obviously, just we, real quick, real quick, I think that needs to be on on the uh, when, when it actually airs. That needs to be created by Chan the Creator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you giving him a rapper name now? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta drop your mixtape, man. What's going on? Hey, hurry up. <laughs> so right. listen up. Um, twenty twenty three. Uh, Chan the Creator's <laughs> first mixtape. Oh, oh, oh. oh, there we fat, go. Fat, fat and black and spicy. Oh, oh, oh God. man, I love it. You're dropping oh, yeah. that with Murphy well, season so, three. So we have been <laughs> talking <laughs> about fat and black productions doing more and getting more involved. Maybe we should uh, open up a studio for Chan to record his first rap album. Yeah, yeah there we go. I, I I have a feeling that uh, our other writer that we're going to bring in might have something to say about that. Uh, yeah. Shall we bring Tara in? No, I think look, I'm li- I'm literally spitting bars. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, for those of you listening and not watching, <laughs> there, there are red bricks behind. Oh, uh, yeah, they're fire. Oh man, <laughs> this is painful. By, yeah. <laughs> Tara, save us. I I can't come back from that, y'all. I'm sorry. Uh, but... <laughs> Tara, welcome to the show. Tara is uh, the other writer. Uh, and I failed to mention all three of, of these individuals are also producers on the show. Um, we call them producers because that. they're unpaid. And so it's a way of giving them credit for something. Um, yeah. It looks great on their resume, by the way. Absolutely. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. You know what looks even better is executive producer. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> <this guy. laughs> so, uh, Tara, welcome to the show. Tell us, you know, spend a minute or two. Tell us about who you are, uh, where you are, and what you do. Um, I'm a professional bum. Just kidding. Um, no, I, I mean I'm a I'm a writer and a um, I do customer service work sometimes. Um, from Bowling Green, Kentucky, two seven zero. We're nowhere, but we make Corvettes. That's the cool thing. Uh, <laughs> Um, and other than that, man, I'm just a, a weirdo on the internet, you know. Fair, fair enough. So uh, I like that's, it. That's I it. like it. So, what brought you to Murphy's Inc.? What caught your eye? What what really, you know, got the hook in? Uh, I mean, the the concept looked real, like it had a lot of promise to it, um, and I really just wanted to get some experience in the field. Also, I really just like audio dramas. <laughs> like any every audio drama I've listened to, I've just like kind of been like, I like how they paint the picture in your head without you having to look at it. I I love cartoons more than I like live action stuff, but this is like cartoons minus the cartoon, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of yeah, interesting, and I'm I'm hoping I can sense. like take that into uh, into the future, like this experience, the the connections we've made, the the friendships along the way, if you will. Um, just to keep chugging and, and doing more creative stuff. Fair enough. So, yeah. oh, okay. So, you Chan, you 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 get some writers, some interested individuals, um, and what happens next? Yeah. Um, so originally we had we didn't decide on well before Terra came. Uh, it was just me, Austin, and another person that kind of flaked on us, but that's okay. Um, 
we we no judging no judging Ooh. yeah no judging <laughs> no <laughs> whatsoever <laughs> i mean it's their fault you know flaked on us man yeah. yeah so we 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 couldn't decide on a project to do and then i th- think uh we chose um murphy's ink because it seemed like like a interesting premise that could get a lot of people involved since like you know it spans lots of time periods and you know they're bound to be something that someone's interested in and once we got that going um you know we we were approached by a, a guy named scott young from email who said he was the executive pre, uh, producer of secrets of heritage house another uh pop, popular audio drama in nevada so um yeah he he offered to kind of mentor us and um, help get this going since he's made audio dramas before and that's when uh he introduced us to you mark yes indeed um well, I, I have to imagine there was something else because when I got involved, it was at auditions. Uh, so, oh yeah, uh, Tara Austin, oh yeah, you know, give that me was... give me some of the story oh, yeah. of creating scenes for auditions and what kind oh, of yeah. how that came to be. <clears throat> so basically, what happened was Chan had a sort of blueprint for us to work off of. So he's like, "All right, this is kind of what we want for like our characters." Like, Murphy's going to be this person, and this is going to be their personality. So, oh, man, that first script was a journey to write because, man, yeah. That, it was interesting because, like, I've was, never written anything with anybody, you know? Like I've never script written that script now, in now, general. Tara, had you ever written any scripts, like any plays, anything like that? Um, yes, I write scripts for, for comic books, um, okay. which you still have to script out, but it's, it's vastly, not vastly different, but fairly different, you know? Sure. Um, this is purely vocal. So all the, all the direction it, you give to the actors is just, you know, inflect like this, but in a comic, it's like, you know, you know, you have to actually you read, paint it, you the read scene. it. Yeah. You actually have to paint the scene. You have to actually. Yeah. The words how to make sense within the scene, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, but uh, this was a cool challenge, for sure. So the first episode, which is a double episode, spoiler, um, it, it, it is a a double extra large episode, if you will. Um, <laughs> double XL. <laughs> that goal. straight out the box for the two of you having never worked together before, um, and frankly had never written anything audio drama wise before. Um, what were, what were some of the pain points? Austin first. I think, I mean, honestly, working with Tara has had been way smoother than I expected. Mostly because like, we just had a system like, all right, here, you write in this color, I'll write in this color and we'll like bust out a scene. And then like later on, we'll look back at it and be like, Hey, um, I think I might want to change this or, Hey, I think this dialogue needs like to be a little bit more natural or something like that and we'll just change it and way more often than not we would agree with it so now now what what what? has been difficult or or conversely what has gone extremely well Uh, i mean honestly it was a very smooth process like austin said like we we it was honestly kind of lightning in a bottle. Like we just kind of like mesh well as writers. So I wouldn't say it was painful. I think the hard part is like learning to work with a team. Like there are, um, and Mark, you 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 can attest. Like I I have kind of like really bad time management. So I'm trying to work on that. Um, but like, it's just interesting when you have other people like depending on on you to get stuff done. You know what I mean? Like. You know, if I'm doing something solo, I can just put it off to oblivion. But we're trying to get this thing out. You know, we've got we've got, you know, to get this to the people. And um, I think that was kind of like the biggest pain point, so to speak, uh, to get used to. Jan, for you, uh, you know, you created the show. You you it was kind of a, or your original brainchild. Um, and then you helped write some of the early scenes what has been your um, 
you, you've done a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, trying to help bring in the collaborators, if you will. How, how has that gone? Uh, because with an audio drama, there are so many things that, that, that go into it. It's not just writing. It's not just voice acting. There, there's music. There's SFX Foley. There's so many different key components. How, how has that been for you? Um, yeah. So, uh, like, when I started, I had, like, no idea on, how, like, the, the different components and... You know, as as I realized, I need to hire hire more people. Um, it was basically just shooting my shot in the dark, really. Just you know, reaching out to um, you know different forums, Facebook groups, you know, Reddit. Um, just trying to just say like, hey, uh, we got we got something cool going on. Do you want to join us? And yeah, you know, we found uh, we managed to find a music composer. Uh, XFX guys, um, you know, some of our voice actors uh, came from, like, you know, we managed to bring in, like, an international group of people. Like, some of our voice actors come from all over the world, like Britain and America and America. So, yeah. <laughs> a lot of America. America. <laughs> yeah, a lot of America. And so, and so his, actually, I had a question for uh, Tara and Austin now. I guess uh, I'll let you get a word in edgewise. Yeah, please. Uh, <laughs> now you said like uh, working on that on the first script, it was a little bit harder. But did you find as as you kind of became more intimate with the characters, understanding them a little bit more, that the uh, later scripts became a little bit easier, or was it was it still was there still like hard times trying to get the rest of it done, making a complete story? I think the well, the first script definitely was like harder than uh, like to write than the rest of them, mostly because it's something that even though we had plot planning and stuff like that, the way that we wrote, there were some times where we were kind of like, oh, this fits, like we we're like in the middle of the writing and there will be times where you're kind of like, oh, this actually fits better than what we had planned. Let's go with that. And yeah. Mm -hmm. This, oh, like, oh, this, oh, wait, hey, let's write a new character right here. Uh, his name is, you know, Philippe or something. So, <laughs> like, he, he, he seems he would fit, like, uh, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. Speaking yeah, of things are kind of constantly changing. Oh, I'm is, sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm already... Is there a character for all three of you, and we'll start with you, Tara. Is there a character that you feel like either is you or a part of you that that really you connect with uh anything along those lines definitely gleason <laughs> yeah um favorite character i As, especially i feel the voice a actor. strong like oh yeah mark c helton right yeah yeah that guy is um, very needy yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I love all the characters. I, I don't think there's one in particular that is um, a lot more me than like any of the others. I think there's like an equal amount because you know it, it's a group effort, it's a collab effort. I, I think um, no, I, I think there's an equal amount uh, spread throughout. I love them all. I love them all. <laughs> Maybe the librarian. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That yeah. I was not expecting that. Austin, for you, is there one that you feel you connect more with or that is one that you're more near and dear to your heart? I don't think really any of them are like more near and dear, I guess. Like some of them are easier to write though than others. Mm -hmm. Like for example, Murphy's pretty easy to write. Um Oh yeah. Yeah, Murphy's really she's easy like to write. She, yeah, she's really fun to write. Yeah. Uh Philippe's Philippe is easy to write because I guess I get to bring out all my inner demons and just, you know, throw it onto him. <laughs> yeah. Every time. Yeah. <laughs> Did you secretly want to be a fashion designer? I, I want to be a fashion designer who roasts everyone that he works for. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. it's great. It's great. He's, he's, he's an amazing character. We love Philippe. Yeah. Chan, how about you? Um, you know, uh, I think coming back to what Tara said, 
I, I see a bit of myself in everyone, you know. Sometimes we gotta be the we we like to be that sassy um, fashion designer, you know. Sometimes um, you know uh, we see uh, I see a bit of myself in like, you know, uh, I guess Michael um, Gleason, you know, even Hart. You know, sometimes you gotta bring you know you you gotta bring that uh, weird uh, European out of you sometimes. <laughs> so, and and James, I'm going to ask you, uh, as talent, who actually is involved with the show, playing a uh, voiceover, doing voiceover for one of the characters, uh, you know, going back to auditions and and reading the sides, you know, there we didn't say, you know, pick a character you want to audition for. We said, read through all the sides, uh, because part of it was we wanted to hear you talk and then kind of say, okay, that voice might fit with this. So for you, when you read the original side, was there a particular character uh, that, that you enjoyed more, that you felt uh, more connection? Drawn to? Um, for me, I think uh, Gleason, was, Gleason was one of the ones that I really liked. Um, and then... Uh, I enjoy. I actually, I actually enjoyed the interaction with the interns as well, um, and then um, I think one of my favorite. Well, I did, I did really like reading for Philippe. I did really like reading for Philippe. I'm not gonna lie, that was that was. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I remember. I remember during that audition, they were like, "Oh, wait, I didn't even real. I didn't even. I didn't even think of that." So. Uh, but I did. Ha so I had a lot of fun. Actually, you know, the the writing was was really easy. It was um, I mean, there I mean, even throughout the process, when we actually were involved, it was just one of those things where it was like, you know, this doesn't sound right to me. Can I? And, they, you know, and, and they were both like, yeah, change it to whatever you need, you know, like however it works <laughs> for you best. So, I mean, but no. But uh, like I said, I think um, it was probably uh, Gleason. The interns of Philippe that were the ones that I really liked, and um, you know, so and so I mean, I ended up, I ended up being involved, and that was the main thing that I just wanted to be involved with it. So, yeah, and you know, uh, I am more intimately involved uh, at this point, of course, but I originally was purely auditioning for the show. Um, yeah, I, I don't even remember where I saw the original post for auditions coming up. Um, and I was like, Ooh, that sounds interesting. Uh, I read the premise and I was like, Ooh, and, and we, we talked about it on the show, you know, before I was ever met any of you before Scott, uh, the consultant ever reached out to me about working with you. Uh, I just saw this post about these auditions and I was like, Ooh, you know, cause I, I had been working on secrets of heritage house. <laughs> hey, can I tell you real quick though? When I saw, when I first saw the thing for Murphy's Inc and it was just like a simple casting call, I was like, Murphy's Inc. I was like, yo, is that, is this like some kind of continuation of Murphy Brown? Like I, I originally, <laughs> like I originally thought, like that's what I originally thought. Like I, I didn't, I didn't really see anything about the story, like what the story was or anything. I was just kind of like, yeah. uh, cause Mark had posted it on our page and I was like, Murphy's Inc. Like, what is this? Like some kind of, like, I thought it was maybe like a spinoff of Murphy Brown or something like that. And I was like, yeah, uh, what? And then he kind of, he kind of talked about it and I was like, oh, it's oh, it's like an audio drama. Okay, cool. Then I'm I'm down to get in on that, see what it's about. And then like it was nothing, nothing <laughs> of, of what I thought it was. Like, you know, it was it was it was a nice surprise to actually walk, you know, kind of come into an audition and not really, you know, read it and and then kind of get what the story was about. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> I was gonna yeah, say, were you disappointed? it wasn't murphy <laughs> no no i actually oh, i was just i it confused me at first just because you know like it murphy is one of those like and that's that for some reason that's the frame of reference yeah, i no. went to but but like it was one of those <laughs> things where it was just like i was i was uh i was pleasantly surprised by the by what the show was about so i was like hey yo okay yeah well and for me as as an actor um, you know, I got the sides to read for the auditions and I 
always believe that I want to make myself uh, as available as possible. I don't want to just give one look um, because, uh, you know, if you go into an audition and you're auditioning for three different roles and you basically play the same character all three times. Um, That's not going to be good for you at all. Yeah. So yeah. for me, I, I genuinely tried to develop a character for each of the roles I was interested in. I was absolutely interested in Murphy. Um, I, of course, want to be top dog. I want to be the person in charge. Um, that's just something within my nature. Um, and, and I was kind of interested in Michael, but I was like, meh. Uh, and then Gleason was, to me, uh, immediately when I read some of Gleason's dialogue, I, I right away had a character in mind uh, of kind of this bumbling Jordy LaForge. And, yeah. and so, you know, fast forward to the actual auditions and the first time I get to meet the, the three of you because Scott reaches out to me and he says, Hey, you know, I'm actually working with the, those folks over there and uh, they, they need a producer. Uh, they need somebody to kind of, lead the charge so to speak would you be interested and i'm like uh what <laughs> and he's like well you know you're doing it over here with heritage house um you know maybe maybe this would be good because in the long run i don't i'm speaking as scott i don't anticipate being with them beyond season one and so they're gonna need somebody long term and i was like well how about i <clears throat> come to the auditions and see what they're about. I don't want to commit to anything because I've never worked with any of these folks before. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I remember that first day, you know, we're, we're in the room, we were doing the auditions through zoom. And, and I remember, you know, meeting all of you, none of you turned your cameras on. Um, this is actually the first time that Tara, Austin, yeah. and Chan have exposed themselves to me yeah. um, on that camera. Zoom call. <laughs> the whole internet, too. Yeah, That's that Zoom thing. call not could you. not have contained yeah. such power. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that was, the internet might have blown up at that point, huh? Exactly. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I remember, like, I was impressed with the writing uh, and the concept from the get-go. Uh, so finding out uh, throughout this process of working with y'all how, uh, you know, frankly, inexperienced everyone was, it was very surprising. Yeah. Honestly. like yeah. <laughs> Bunch to, of know, to know now <laughs> that you guys hadn't actually written scripts nope. uh, before and then, you know, now finding out that, you know, this is the first time you had actually worked together trying to get uh trying to get a script together it's just like yo wait what that's crazy Excuse that me. was <laughs> that was pretty that was it was, it was oh, good it was yeah good. Uh, uh, and so let's let's fast forward a little bit so obviously we did some casting uh i am in the role of gleason um which i get to do is that bumbling jordy laforge and i absolutely love doing the character um yeah it takes a lot out of me if I'm honest when we're in those recording sessions, because I'm the type of actor where I don't need you to lead me in. I don't need another actor necessarily to work off of. It's great if it's available, but I don't need it. Um, but it, it's draining because doing the character, it's a character voice. It's not me. Um, or at least I hope you guys, y'all would agree with that. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, and also you're directing too. Like, it's, well, yeah, it's a lot for you to juggle. You know, well, and a lot of the times that we're recording Gleason, it's after we've already recorded everyone else. And so it's at the end of a session. It's like, OK, let's get let's knock out a couple of these scenes. Um, but, you know, working with James in the role of intern one, um, you know, no, two. Oh, yes. Intern two. I apologize. Oh, and there is on. there is a distinct <laughs> difference. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, no, there's so, a real difference there. Yeah. Yeah. So for the two of you. <laughs> As yeah. writers, Come on, bro. What? Who, who have created this, these scenes, these these exchanges between characters? Um, I want you to think back to the auditions and how did that feel for you? Because this was the first time hearing potential voice talent reading your words. Oh yeah, that was amazing. I was like, 
because I think the first person up was librarian. And we had a, mm. oh, I forgot who went first. Uh, but a lot of the librarian uh, auditioners had like a very like fancy way of speaking, I guess. Mm. So to hear that, like, because I, I imagine it while I'm writing a course, but to actually hear it, you're like, wait a second, I wrote that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, those are my words. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? My words there. I'm not, I'm not used to this. <laughs> Tara, I mean, yeah, it is specifically really the librarian, you you did mention that as being one you felt a bit of a fondness for. Yeah, because I'm a witch and I like naps. That's why. <laughs> that's, that's actually the whole reason for that joke is like, I it's that that's the answer. The librarian is the closest character to me. Yeah, for sure. But uh, hear, hearing those words come out of somebody else's mouth was super weird. Um, because nothing I've ever written has ever been performed or spoken or anything until then. So um, to have these people like auditioning to to say the words that we've written was just kind of real. You know, it was just like, not like, oh, I've made it, but like, oh, shit, like, <laughs> we're really doing this, you know, like, it's real. Yeah. And, and so it being real and Chan, uh, welcome back. Uh, from your perspective as the creator, as the person who, you know, brought this all in into being if you will um what for you uh was it like at auditions to to experience everything kind of coming together some some dialogue some scene work and now you've got some voice actors um putting on a show if you will it, did he just go black did <laughs> Did we lose Jan? Right. Jan, are you still there? Oh, there he there is. There he is. Jan, can you hear us? He still looks Asian to me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he did not go black. And we've got Tyrus checking oh, yeah. in. Murphy Zinc in the house. That's right. This yes, is the sir. Murphy Zinc special. Tyrus nice. is also a part of our uh, show. Um, and uh, we've got a message from Chan. Hold up. He can't hear us. Uh, Judd fixing it. Okay. Well, uh, mm -hmm. you, give us the, you give us the thumbs up when you're back, and we'll just keep going. So. He can't hear you say that. Oh, no. Uh -oh. <laughs> we lost oh. the creator. We, we lost Chan the creator. Well, now they can't hear us. We can just no. what we want. So much for oh. creating. <laughs> so, Okay. Here we are. We're we we've announced on this show that we have uh, wrapped on principal recording uh, yes. for season one. Yes. Um, dealer's choice, Tara or Austin, um, mm -hmm. and please give us uh, a little bit of a feel for season one without being spoilery, uh, spoilery. And, and what what the audience can expect. Okay. Well, season one is an introduction to our world and to our characters. And it's sort of a, uh, like an appetizer, I guess. Because season two, we <laughs> want to go in more in depth with the characters. What are their motivations? Yeah. What brought them to where they're at? And, you know, all that good stuff. Because honestly, if you drop all that in season one, no one's going to care. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yep. Yeah. So I, uh, uh, we haven't really given much away way. about the season, by the way. So yeah, so we've kept that yeah. super mums. Like oh, we yeah. showed like what the so, premise of the show is, and that's about it. So what do you feel comfortable, Tara, sharing with the audience about time traveling one? thieves? Um, so we've got two agents who are I, I like to say time traveling thieves. Like if I'm trying to like simplify it for people, like it's a time traveling high story, you know. Yeah, but um, we've got these two agents who go back and were tasked to go back in time and retrieve an artifact for a benefactor. Um, not, you know, and um, they just get into kind of a rough situation as as stories go. There's always some sort of dilemma, <laughs> but they go back to. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's too much to say, but they go back to um the Norse times. Um. 
which is really interesting because it's one of those time periods we didn't want to do like something super overdone like the fall of the roman empire or like world war ii um so we, we chose to go norse with it um, that was oh, so that, that, that was interesting to me because i was like oh this is... i just played through assassin's creed this is great yeah yeah and well, <laughs> that, well that but that but it was also one of those things it was like oh wait norse like yeah, that's one of those yeah. that's one of those time periods that you don't really you don't see. Like so yeah, everybody yeah. does World War II. You know, I was thinking, you know, and then I was like, oh, all right, cool, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you don't have that Viking I, show on the History Channel, or you don't have the Viking movie that just came out. Like, no, but I'm saying as far as like did a Viking movie as, like, just come out? That's done. No, yes, uh, the, the Northman. Northman. Yeah, yeah. It's on Peacock now. But oh, anyway. sorry. No, not yet of that. I'm. So- <laughs> I think I've got a lag. My bad. <laughs> but no, but uh, but like it was one of those. It was one of those time periods where it was like, oh, you know what? Like, that's interesting. I wouldn't have thought to go there, especially with a uh, like a time traveling heist. I would think there would be some other yeah. stuff that you wanted to do. But but that was, you know, lightweight genius. Because yeah, <laughs> I mean, we wanted you to know. explore. Go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, like, like you said, like, what, what do you really think about being something stealable when you think of the Norse? You know what I mean? Like, that was kind yeah. of part of the challenge was finding something interesting to make a story around uh, with something kind of obscure. Right. Kind and I think that's the great thing about this, though. Like, we can, because like you guys are saying, World War II, Roman Empire. I mean, it's not like I'm not hating on those time periods and people who enjoyed it, but like they've been done so much, there isn't really anything new we can bring. Like, yeah, there's already a video game about some dude in the future going back and and find the Romans. <laughs> I forgot what it's called, but it's a great video game. However, there's a lot of stuff that we can do in terms of what time periods we can choose. So there's a lot of unheard of like civilizations slash people that no one really talks about and with this i mean we can we can go into that it's great so chan yeah we want to be something that you're going to remember yep chan for you uh you know we we're discussing right now uh, a little bit about season one without giving any spoilers away, but that, you know, some of it is taking place during Norse times. Uh, and, and for those of you out there that don't know what the Norse are, uh, Vikings, to be clear. <laughs> um, yeah. so, so Chan, for you, in, in your mind's eye, back when creating the show, um, what were some of the time periods in your head uh, that you saw uh, potentially wanting to explore? Um, yeah, so originally we were thinking of doing something closer to the, our current time now, so like something in the 1900s. But, um, you know, there's a lot of historical events that time, but we were worried that, um, you know, there there's going to be a lot of historical inaccuracies if we try to portray that time period. Like the, the 1900s had a lot going on. And we weren't sure what to pick. So um, another one was uh, Egypt, but that's kind of done to death. Um, one thing I was interested in was like, I guess, mo- um, like ancient China. But like, it was kind of hot. It's, it's going to be a tough challenge to get like, like you know, um, like an American to like kind of like accurately portray someone who used to live back then. That's why he hired me. Yeah. yeah. yeah i i think you know it's all a matter of of how you um cast you know uh, i'm not one of those people that believes that uh a white role needs to be by a white person or or anything of that nature i think that whoever the best person for the role is 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 who it should be and you know, if you can find uh, an appropriate person that can portray, uh, you know, a, a Chinese person, um, great. But if you can find a Chinese person that can give you some some Mandarin or, you know, whatever the case may be, then even better, right? Um, so is that maybe a sneak peek at something that might happen in season two? I'll snap. Hey, 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 um, it definitely could be. 
Yeah. So for 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 let, let's talk about it. So season one is wrapped. We're not going to talk about yeah. how it ends, uh, but obviously everyone dies. There is yeah. there is going to be a season two, right? That's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so anything you can anything you can tell us that that maybe you're working towards with a season two, without giving anything away for season one. Like like where are some places I, we I might don't see? think we have. I don't think we have anything set concretely right now. We, we're throwing around a lot of ideas. Um, we've we've got on some new writers because we want to expand. So that's that's going to be fun. But um, hold up. So wait, because one of the things the audience absolutely needs to understand is that primarily up until now, from a production standpoint, aside yeah. from our, our music person and our SFX uh, fully work. This yeah. is less less Everybody. James. This is it. This is, this is yeah. the core team, right? So, yeah. So we got you, two directors. We got two writers. Yeah, we do it. <laughs> you you mention uh, you mention new writers. Explain. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. New so six episodes. Yeah. <laughs> six episodes was honestly like kind of a, a lot, even though like it was two of us. It was it was a it was a challenge, you know. We had to care like we had to create the whole season. Um and so it's six episodes for season one, and we want to do more. So we're gonna do um closer to like uh, somewhere like ten to twelve episodes for season two. Um and that's it would be a lot easier to to share the load with other writers. <laughs> so we did a search. Um, we put out some feelers and you know audition people, um, and we got some really, we got some really good people who are very interested in in helping to become a part of this whole thing. Uh, we've got like a historian guy. We've got one of Austin's friends. Yeah, um, my DNT We got a couple other friend. people. Yeah, very cool people, um, and I, I'm very excited to see what we can come up with because uh, <laughs> so it's already like kind of crazy. So with that being said, how how many new writers are there? Uh, yeah, four new writers. Four new writers. Total six six in total. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So team. so we more yeah. than doubled the size of the production staff. Um, yep. And so with with so that being said, we, we have <laughs> yeah. I I have announced on this show that our intention with season two uh, is that it will be longer. Um, mm -hmm. You know, season one is six episodes, two double episodes, if you will, uh, a book ending, four other episodes. Yeah. And then, of course, we've got uh, season two. And, and right now we're looking at anywhere between 10 and 12 episodes. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Because yeah. we're thinking double of the episodes. Expanding. Oh, Lord. <laughs> season one is one long story. Uh, season one is like one time period. And so for season two, we're we're trying to break it up to where we do smaller, um, like smaller, like less time in a time period, like two to three episodes per time period, um, with a, an episode book ending the whole season, like like we did this time, you know, episode yes. one, episode twelve or whatever, uh, you know, not handling like the overarching that. story. I like that idea. That's good. Yeah. So we're looking at multiple time periods in, in season two. So does that mean there are probably going to be a lot of opportunities out there for uh, talent for voiceover work? Oh, my yes, God. we're going to need a lot of we're going to need a lot of people. We've got like well, we've got our core cast, obviously, um, and we're we're going to do a lot more with the cast we have. I'm excited to like dive into what we have, but in each time period there have to be people in the past so we're going to need more people um to help out to, to voice so, <laughs> so really quickly um we've got tyrus checking in asking a question and uh we'll, we'll shoot this over to chan for the question uh so tyrus says it's awesome to see the creative uh that blessed us with this journey are there any goals on how far you want to take this show Chan? Yeah, so, um, you know, we don't want to be just pigeonholed into uh, an audio drama. Um, you know, since it's because of its audio format and we already got the script, it can be transferred into, uh, you know, any other medium, you know. Um, maybe we'll see a Netflix series one, but uh, it's still, still not a bad work to do. But, um, 
you know, fingers crossed. Not the uh, sky's the limit. Yeah. Yeah, and we will avoid asking Chan any more questions. Uh, his audio is terrible <laughs> now. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you're here uh, and, and can join yeah. us, but uh, I don't know what happened. It's He kind of sounds like uh, Sylvia. Uh, and for those of you listening, oh. uh, Sylvia is a character in our show that is the... Uh, AI um, system. It is the yeah. uh, Alexa, Alexa of the world, if you will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh yeah, uh he, he's definitely we, we should have been recording him right now. Don't do us, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tyrus also oh, uh gosh. Tyrus also is asking, uh, I'm so into this because it reminds me of an anime style story. Have you ever thought of concept art to expand Murphy's universe? Uh I, I can say from an executive producer standpoint that um my job is to think about where to take this thing. Uh, we've, we've got some amazing creative talent, honestly, in Chan and Austin and Tara um, and these new writers. I am, I am immensely uh, blessed and impressed with uh, the level and the caliber of, of these people because you don't know what you're going to get. Um and, and when I came into this show from an outside perspective, I had no idea what, what I was walking into. And for me, I want, ultimately, if, I, if I'm just being frank, I want to make money for doing this. And I want everyone involved to make money for doing this. Um, because you. none of us are making anything right now. Uh, and I think yeah. that this, this <laughs> show, and I think that the talent involved with this show uh, from a creative standpoint and from, from a voiceover standpoint, I think we've got something on our hands here. It, it's just a matter of marketing it um, and, and finding people that want to engage with it. For me, I would prefer rather than us creating concept art, I think there's going to be a fan base out there and, and there's a lot of podcasts and, oh, and audio dramas yeah. that um, have that fan base that does that work for you. And I mm-hmm. think, I think this show has that potentiality uh, to really um, have a fan base that is, is fervent wanting more and so much so that they're willing to create stuff of their own. Yeah. yeah, I know we're joking about. Say that again, Chan. I'm sorry. In before the R34. Oh, please, no. <laughs> hey. oh, anyway, wow. moving on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, oh, I know we we're jo- uh, I know you're we joking about the painting in the back earlier, but um, I can draw like a little bit. I've been drawing. I've been sketching America from Elden Ring. <laughs> I, I can't see that at all. Can anyone you probably, see you that? Probably can't, see, you probably can't yeah. see that, but I'm just saying. Concept uh, art to answer Tyrus's question. What so nice. wait, what is that concept art you're drawing? Oh, so it's it's Merica from Elden Ring. She's a is one of the characters. So you're spending so you time draw. concept art for other stuff, but not yes. us. That's that's great. Because <laughs> y'all haven't asked yet, that's why. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I kind okay. of asked everyone, hey, oh. does anybody know somebody that can create a logo for us? Yeah, I said I can do concept art. I can't do logos. <laughs> I can do concept art. I don't, I don't, I don't mess with logos. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. mess with that. Yeah. Exactly. Logos are tough. Well, okay. I'm going to challenge you to create a concept art for each of the six episodes. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Oh, Something dude. That, like, a, like a title card. Exactly. Something that... Yeah. You know, like they do for Marvel shows. They have a poster for each episode. Exactly. That's cool. Yeah. It's gonna be on paper though. Just saying. we got to figure out what the Whatever. machine looks like first of all. Like we gotta, oh, we gotta nail yeah. that down. Yeah. What yeah. does it look like? <laughs> well, I imagine so, it. Was so a hold bunch on. Of Before we go out. into that, here we are. We're at an hour into this thing, and I am completely content with continuing going. I just want to make sure y'all are still available because we planned this for an hour. Mm-hmm. If you have to go, um, you know, I absolutely understand. But if you want to keep going, let's keep this thing going. I hate it. Dude, here. I'm trying to <laughs> avoid my real life as much as possible. Let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So then let's, let's talk. Suck. 
let's talk a little bit out in the ether. So you you mentioned yeah. the time machine, and we really need to nail down what the time machine looks like, feels like. And that's that's one of the interesting things. You know, we were talking about this earlier in Discord, where uh, you know, one of the nice things about writing an audio drama, uh, and I hope you would concur, is that it makes the dialogue that much more important because mm -hmm. you don't have visuals to help sustain what the show is trying to achieve. Right. So, so walk mm -hmm. us through that process as you're writing a scene uh, really quickly before we go off about the time machine, walk us through the process of, of how you write a scene and, and avoid the need for the imagery because it's not going to be there. Is that a challenge? And, and what does that kind of look like, feel like for you? I mean, it just all Dude, comes I'll be honest. You... Oh. oh, go ahead. How dare you? I was joking. <laughs> oh. No, but like, I'm just joking. But um, it just comes down to like how you sort of describe the scene using the dialogue. So if they're like in a coffee room or a break room or something, you're like, oh, hey, someone just dropped a cup of coffee or something. Oh, I spilled something, you know, yeah. that, type, that kind of stuff. But also, let's say they're in the, um, what you call the time machine room, right? Yeah. We have audio, we got SFX, which is also great. That, that is Yeah, a lot amazing. of it comes down to just sound, honestly. Yeah, sounds. But you can also say like, hey, like there is, can you fetch me that wrench? Can you get me the quantum whatever and plug it in, you know, 45 degrees to the West or something like that? <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. But, um, I mean, it's a big blend of dialogue and also the the audio team coming in clutch. Yeah, so it's a little bit of everything. You can't, yeah. you, you're not relying, because you don't have the visual, you have to rely on not only the dialogue, but the sound effects that make a huge difference yes. in making everything connect. And the faith of the listeners. Yeah, this, yeah. yeah, I guess it also involves, <laughs> yeah, involves some imagination. Yeah. Um, to be fair, when, like when I write, I don't, I don't have like a mind's eye per se. Like if you were like, hey, imagine an apple. I could like think of a time that I've seen an apple, but I can't like just conjure an apple. Um, so when I write scripts, like even when I write comic scripts, um, like I don't give a whole lot of detail because I assume that like whoever is going to draw it has that in their head. You know what I mean? Like I I'll tell you like, oh, this person, you know, vague description, like, oh, they're five, three, blah, blah, blah. But like if it's like, oh, we're at a coffee shop, everybody knows what a coffee shop looks like. You know what I mean? You can. I've been to a coffee shop, you know, so there's a lot of leeway you have because there's just these like mental shortcuts everyone has for certain things. Right. Um, and I think that helps play into it a lot, too. That makes sense. Like we've all been in a break room, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe most of us, not Chan. Um... <laughs> yeah, we don't even have coffee shops here. Yes, oh, no, really? well, I, I more meant the break room because you identify as a student, so there's oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's no break rooms in in the student uh, lounge. No. So I miss those days. really quickly, just because I, I I think this is absolutely interesting because I had no clue when we first started working on this thing, uh, because again, I I'm today is the first time in person nice. I'm seeing. The three of you. I've seen pictures of Chan and Austin online. Tara never found one of you before. Stalking me. Um, yes. yes. Well, I mean, yeah. we are friends on Facebook, so you know. And Instagram. Excuse me. Sure oh is. yes, I apologize. That's true. <laughs> uh, but uh, to me, uh, you know, one of, one of the things that that's interesting is that concept that Tara you mentioned a moment ago about you can visualize that person as five three, or you can visualize the. Uh, the coffee shop, if you will, for, for the three of you, Chan, Austin, Tara, um, let's kind of talk about the characters for a couple of minutes. And, and, you know, we have some voices that are associated with them, but tell, I, I want to get a better feel for the characters themselves, because one of the things that is interesting to me is the three of you, uh, from an age perspective, y'all are very young. Um, 
and and the audience that's listening to this and not watching this right now they don't see you uh and so voices might be misleading to an extent but uh, austin mm -hmm. first and foremost how old are you i'm 22 22 tara what 27 <laughs> 27 and cham uh 21 so uh, uh, the creator is 21 Yep. Right, so it's <laughs> it's amazing to me uh, the the sheer fact. And Tara, you you cringe a bit at, at mentioning your age, which yeah. is hilarious because James and I are both pushing forty. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. So it's just you know, like it's a weird time. <laughs> it, well, it's funny because you know we are thirteen ish years your senior. And you're yeah. the closest, right? You've got Chan and Austin at 21 and 22, and man, that's 18 years, right? Uh, and, yeah. and Tyrus, who who confirms himself, he's he's the oldest one around right now at 43. Uh, yes, oh, you thanks. are old, Tyrus. Um, <laughs> I, and actually, Tyrus and I go way back. Uh, I don't know if I've mentioned that to the three of you, uh, but Tyrus and I have, yeah. and James, for that matter, yeah. we we've all known each other. We. We all three of us were in college together. Uh, James and I go back to high school. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it, it's interesting that this 21 year old kid created this show and brought <laughs> all of these people together internationally. Like, yeah, frankly, truly, right? Like, when you think about it, this 21 year old kid who's a sophomore in college, it, it, we call it sophomore in, in the US, yeah. Chan. Um, <laughs> I, I, I know over there y'all call it second year or something like that. Um, <laughs> but it yeah, it, it sounds pretty boring. Yeah, yeah. Sophomore sounds so much more engaging, right? It but it blows my mind <laughs> that this 21 year old, this 22 year old who'd never written a script before, uh, and this 27 year old that's never written for an audio drama before. <laughs> have really created some really compelling work yeah yeah uh, thank you no and, and <laughs> that's not to blow smoke that's not that's, uh, so just a little bit of background on true. on me and james i'll let you give some background too i've been involved in professional television professional film i have been involved with over 50 theatrical productions uh from yeah. professional to community theater. So I've worked Talk with, about smoke. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying I've, I've worked with yeah. a lot of different talent. I've yeah. been on film sets with Brad Pitt. Like, you know, I, I've, I've worked with a lot Name of, drop. yeah, what? <laughs> just drop that. So I mean, James, like James <laughs> has been on film set with, you know, Anthony Rapp and, and uh, K Diggs and Adina Menzel. And, yeah. yeah. So, you know, nice. we, the, we have both done some, you know, some good stuff. I mean, Tyrus yeah. has as well, yeah. uh, which I'm so, sure he'll, he'll toot his own horn here in a minute. Um, and he's driving and, home. So. <laughs> and now we've got our, be, we've got our, to, but. we've got our damn checking in uh, Mr. Brian Allen Hobbs, who is interested yeah. and potentially going to be working <laughs> a, a little bit on the creative side, uh, helping, hopefully helping us out. We'll see. Uh, with Murphy's. Yes, with Murphy's Inc. Uh, so cool. Mr. Brian Allen Hobbs has worked with the amazing and comparable Phil Collins. Uh, oh, I love Phil yeah. Collins. <laughs> you know, he he worked on the original run of um, Rock of Ages, Broadway musical. Mm. Um, so ultimately, my point being that, that right now, the <laughs> three of you, Austin, Tara, and Chan, are engaging with people myself james brian tyrus that we're all older than you <laughs> it's almost twice as old as you and you have come up with something so damn creative yeah. that that i think you really need to be proud um and again it's not about blowing smoke it's not about trying to make you feel good it's just a reality do you know what the secret is uh mark Please, I'm please tell me. It's, it's, it's years and years of writing fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> and 
great. That, hey, listen, if that's yeah. what it takes, <laughs> that's what it takes to come up with this stuff, man. More people need to get into fan fiction because exactly. this, this show is legit. Like just the way, and actually, you know, because like uh, I don't know if you guys are you ever watched the show Timeless uh, when I I. I absolutely loved that show and when i when especially when i heard this was time and it heist and i was like yo that's kind of automatically what it kind of turned me to and i was like yo i like this idea i've i've always liked time concept stuff anyways you know like oh, yeah. from you know back to the future and all those kind of movies and so like anything that deals with the, that kind of stuff i i've always enjoyed and so that's one of the reasons i think that when once i gotten once you know i finally found out what this was all about and got involved i was that that made me even more excited to be a part of it so because the writing has been phenomenal it's been it's been a fun time i'll say that much it's been i mean i i think from a writing perspective i just get i just i just watched a lot of tv i've just you know what i mean like i just take in too much media i gotta outlet it somewhere you know what i mean <laughs> but <laughs> ain't nothing um, wrong with that Man, I uh, I'm just excited to work with everybody. Like every time we get off like a phone call or like uh, uh, we get done directing or something, every single time I always like take off my headset and I'm like, damn, I really love the people I'm working with. You know what I mean? Like that's that's Aww. like what it is for me. It's just like I really am just excited that it is a good product, and I love like I love the work we're doing, but I I love the people more. Like it all it's always the people that that stick out in my mind for like good memories and things. You know. Yep. Brian asks, did any of you ever read Axiom's End? The author has oh. touted how she got her start in fan fiction. I have no, not. No, but that see. sounds interesting. Wait, Axiom's End. It's a 2020 <laughs> science fiction novel. Oh, oh Lindsay that. Ellis. I know Lindsay Ellis. She's uh, she, she was a YouTuber. I think she quit. Um, Yeah, Nostalgia Chick. Yeah. I haven't read it, but she's cool. So let's let's get let's talk about season two without obviously because mm -hmm. one of the things that we can honestly say is that season two is not uh, fleshed out. Um, we we talked about potentially multiple time periods uh, where season one was just one. Um, mm -hmm. Is there any other insight to what a season two might hold? Yeah, I think I can answer that. Um, so season two, we're going to see more, I guess, interaction with the, the world that they stay in. Um, you know, we're going to see more, like season one was focused on uh, one hive. So, you know, you, you don't really see, like, what happens if they maybe, you know, fail their mission. You know, maybe um, something, an obstacle comes in their way that prevents them from tra time traveling. You know, there might be even, like, uh, another species we get involved with. You know. Did you say alien? So we just get that. <laughs> oh, he said hey, another hey, species. Hey, hey. I heard species. He said, he said species. Hey, no, he, yeah. he, he been talking about <laughs> Crab people, crab. Oh people. no, not the crab people. Oh, come on. No, and, and so I, I, I I'll, I'll pull back the curtain <laughs> a little bit. You know, we're in the process of of creative right now, right? And we use mm -hmm. Discord as one of our uh, main sources of communication. And you know, we are daily dropping. Hey, what about this? Because one of the things I think, and, and I would hope you all agree, is that. We want to, when we're dealing with history, be historically accurate. Yeah. Uh, but when we're dealing with modern times, eh, it's kind of what you make of it, right? Because <laughs> would you say history that, still written. that the concept of, yeah. of Murphy's Inc., when we're dealing with quote-unquote present day, is that 2022? It's like near future. Uh, I think like. it's like near future is what we said it settled on. Yeah. 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 Um, Cause there's like there it's a little more technologically advanced. Like like we were talking about Sylvia, how she's like Alexa Light. Um she, she's kind of like everywhere. It's it's more like um technology's integrated a little bit further into society than 
than we have right now, which is saying kind of a lot because technology is like everywhere right now, (laughs) (laughs) you know? Yeah. Well, in in all reality, that's the direction we're heading. Yeah. But but when it does come to dealing with history, we do want to be historically accurate for the most part. You'll you'll notice in some of the dialogue choices, uh, there were times during writing where, you know, something would originally be written and we'd look into it and be like, "Eh, is this the right choice? Um, Mm -hmm. And and that's also to say there is creative license, of course. Uh, But but to some extent, uh, we want to be historically accurate. And so looking at a season two, you know, we're constantly dropping ideas of what about this time period? What about this incident or event that took place in history? Yeah. Um, you know, I I today was dropping a bunch in the chat because uh, I I was going through, you know, I, I've been trying to do some research and finding interesting things that happened uh, because, you know, as as a producer on this show, it needs to be engaging to me, but I also want to make sure we're able to find a connection to an audience. And as as you mentioned, you didn't want to necessarily do Egyptian because it's overplayed, right? It's overdone. Yeah. So uh, how open are you as from a creative standpoint, the three of you to taking fan feedback, if you will? Oh, Oh. super open. To be fair, uh, for season two, we we've actually asked a lot of the crew, um, a lot of the the talent, the cast um, where they think their characters should go. Um, So we've already kind of opened up that, that little bit of uh, taking, you know, some some uh, suggestions or what what have you. Um, I think fans. Once we get fans, I would love to hear what they think we should do. Because like fan, th- I love when like a fan theory really like picks up steam in a in a in a fandom and like it ends up becoming true. Like like John Krasinski that- is Reed Richards. Spoiler yeah, alert! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Uh, but no, like I, you know, I think that could be cool because I mean, we could also hit the same spot. I mean, because we can be stealing different things. We could always, yeah, <laughs> we could hit the same spot and accidentally run into somebody that we ran into like the last time we were there or something. You know, like <laughs> bring back a character. And, and that was one of my questions: is when you're dealing with different time periods, um, mm-hmm. and you're gonna, I, I would imagine, have different characters in those different time periods because you're not gonna have. Um, I don't know, uh, uh, a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The guy that like, uh, you know, makes horseshoes, a blacksmith. There we go. Blacksmith, uh, yeah. You're not, you're not going to interact with a blacksmith in 1400 AD, uh, and it be the same person or the same voice exactly, uh, in 2000 BC. Right. So, yeah. For the long run, right, you know, talking about a season two, season three, eventually, so on and so forth. Um, how does that go from a casting perspective? Are are you looking at wanting to have voice actors that can give you many different looks or uh, where does that go? Uh, I, I think that's the beauty of being like, a, I guess, make uh, pulling up a team from all over the world realistically we can have you know um actors that that can uh, that can audition from you know uh uh in the beginning we actually got people uh that were interested from like philippines or whatnot and the interesting part is that um once we know as these um you know these talents come in you know they can pitch ideas where maybe we can shine some light on some of the lesser known cultures and then we dive into the history of that mm-hmm. so um you know cool. yeah oh i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut no, you no, sorry. You go. You go. well i was gonna say um we already do kind of have actors who can pull off different looks as you say like we have um our our heart which you know after the recast um we have carrie who is now doing like a french accent um, but she does a, a multitude of voices. You know, she can do, you know, her regular voice. She can do, you know, a, I think she did like a German accent at one point. You know, she does, she has accents. So if you have somebody who can pull off all sorts of different characters, why not use them more than, more than once? As long as they don't sound 
too similar, which is also something we've run into with different actors, but <laughs> that's a story for another day. <laughs> well, so a question along that lines then would be, we're all descendants of someone, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. could we possibly see in this universe a character in a time period that is that descendant of a character we saw in a different time period? I played the fifth. Uh, <laughs> that's that's what I'm gonna say. We plead the fifth. <laughs> Both of us plead the fifth. Yeah. Yeah. Can't have that. Yeah. Enter top man. secret information, I swear. Like yeah, stop trying to spoil things, Mark. Yeah. Ooh, we get we get we get little tidbits. <laughs> so okay, let's let's just get to it, right? So season one has wrapped principal recording. Uh it's it's in post production at this point, which means, yeah. uh, to me, knowing how season one ends, I know there's going to be a season two, and we've talked about there being a season two. Mm -hmm. When do we get in? You know, you're in pre production already. In, in all reality, yeah. you've got you've got new writers. You're you're looking at content. You're you're trying to decide what direction that's going to go. When realistically do we think we could see a casting call? For a season two, realistically, I get so close to the camera there. I was just, I, I'm, I'm really interested. Let's yeah. see. <laughs> um, I mean, realistically, probably around the time season one drops, maybe a little bit after, because we're shooting for um, a little later in the year, if I remember correctly. I've got too many things on schedules right now but we're shooting for a little bit later in the year like fall time so probably you know fall 2022 start putting out casting calls um because we're already writing well we're already brainstorming is the big part and once you get that done at that point it's just the writing and i i, I don't think it's going to take us too long with six writers to get some scripts out to to start the casting process so you know a couple months Austin, would you agree with that? That we're a couple of months away from a casting call for season two? Yeah, I agree with that. Chan, how do you feel about that? That you know, this 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 brainchild of yours has come so far. It has had a audition, it has had writers come aboard, it has had its season one recordings completed, and now it's moving into a season two. What is that like for you? Um, uh, I can only just say it, like, I'm, I'm just blown away that uh, we managed to take this thing this far so far. Um, you know, especially since we're not we we're running on like almost zero budget. So um, yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shoestring. <laughs> Having a shoestring. Yeah, that that that. I, well, well, let's say it's shoestring. Yeah. That's 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 so, honestly we, we were on thread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, I think that like that lack of like a crazy budget behind it makes this at least this first season and maybe the second season. I think it make I think it makes it a little more charming. Um it, that it's really just the collaborative efforts of a bunch of people who care about this project. And that's what it is. It's truly um it's like when you when you look at when you look at like certain artists, for example, like first albums when they don't have fans there's no expectation it sometimes comes out something crazy like like uh i think uh my best example i can think of was like uh maroon five's first album like that mm -hmm. was crazy and they did a bunch of different stuff on there uh not a yeah. bunch of different stuff but they did you know some some you get they got you got a couple different looks out of them and so but then like you go to their next album then there's expectations yeah, it becomes so, a lot like, more corporate even. Yeah. So really right. quickly, just a couple quick call outs. We've got Stephanie Bauman checking in, mm -hmm. who is our Bauman. intern number one. She's number one. Yes, <laughs> that's right, James. One. She's number one. <laughs> I used to I, I would be number read two. Her, I would read her lines every Yeah, I you're would. number two. Who does number two work for? My toilet. So Stephanie oh. checks in. Hi, oh. just came on. So cool to see faces to the voices I've worked with. Stephanie, thank you for checking in. Always great to hear from you. And and one of the greatest comments uh, 
it's probably one of the most interesting sci-fi books I've read in a while that wasn't Star Trek or Star Wars. Oh, the Axiom's End? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I... I on you, read that. I feel like yeah. I must read that now because, uh, you yeah. know, I absolutely love Star Trek and Star Wars, so if something... Star Trek that... a little bit more, apparently. Yes, <laughs> yes. Before the show, uh, I, 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 showed, I showed the team here. I took a test, and evidently I'm 32% Star Wars and 68% Star he Trek. He was a trainee. Yeah, yeah. Starfleet <laughs> trainee. Yes. Yeah. No surprising there. So... All right, let's 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 take a little step away from Murphy's Inc. just for a moment because I think it's always good. Uh, Austin, what have you got in the pipeline? What are you working on aside from Murphy's Inc. that you know is of interest? Ooh, I got short stories. Um, I sent some short stories to a couple of, like magazine, us, but you know, of course, we tried to do that before. Yeah, it takes some yeah. so long to reply. <laughs> but other than that, um, I've got. Uh, this is a novel I'm just working on. It's uh, it's a very long process as well. But um, yeah, I mean, just those are pretty much my personal projects. Um, nothing too interesting. Tara, I uh, aside from working on Murphy's Inc., I am working with a um, like an independent game developer, not like a video game developer, but it's like a like a almost an ARG like live action scavenger hunt sort of thing. It's kind of cool. It's called Outside. Um and it's I, I'm working on a web comic for it and I'm also helping to develop like other aspects. Um and then other than that I'm working on a comic book that is probably going to be a novel first because getting an artist is hard. <laughs> and um I'm trying to like uh get into some anthologies. Um so hopefully I can uh get smaller stories out there with the help of like a collective thing going. Interesting. And Chan, aside from uh, being a scholarly student, uh, what do you got going on? Uh, yeah. So, um, aside from finals coming up, um, some of the other things I got planned was, um, you know, I had I had a plan for an other audio drama, but I'm starting it out as a novel first. Mm. Um, so hoping that once I get that done, I'm like still on chapter one, but, um, just hoping to do more projects, um, uh, just start writing them as novels for seeing where it takes me. Um, I'm trying to do a couple, uh, or worked on a feature film script that was like a year ago. That's kind of half done. Hoping to revisit that soon. All right. But, uh, yeah. Student life, man. No time. Right, right, right. Nice. Yeah. Student life. James, what do you got going on? No one cares. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like that, huh? Like that. It's just the right. reality. No one cares what I've got it's going intern on. Intern life, man. Intern life. <sighs> yeah. So, <laughs> I, I, I just got to say it. It has been an immense pleasure uh, to work with the three of you, um, not James. And uh, I, I really, I, I look forward to it. I, I really, you know, again, pulling back that curtain, we have a biweekly producers call, if you will, uh, where the four of us come together to talk about the direction of the show, where we're at, where we're going. And, uh, you know, there are those Fridays that, I'm and, and that's when we meet is every other Friday. And there are those Fridays where I'm just I'm beat. I'm exhausted. I really don't want to do it. But then I think about the three of you and uh, it, it, it gives me that enough energy to to get to this setup to to do this meeting. And so, you know, again, not blowing smoke, genuine. I, I appreciate the three of you. Um, and I, I look forward to working with the three of you uh, in the future on this and hopefully many other things. Mark, I got a question for you. Sure. So I know that you came on a little bit later once we had the um, scripts out, right? And you were came to audition. So did Scott tell you that we'd never written anything before? No. Nope. Just no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> three so, and blind. 
Yep. That's how they no. <laughs> Yeah, if Scott he, told you, he was like, if Scott told you, like, hey, Mark, you know, I've got these two writers. One of them has never touched script writing before. The other one has never done audio drawing before. Yeah. Um, would you come, like, be a producer on this? Like, <laughs> how would, would that have affected your decision making at all? I want to say no, but. I mean, the truth probably. is probably. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely. That's a bad sell. I, that's no, a really bad. No, I, I know him. I know him well enough where <laughs> that would have been very questionable. He definitely want to see what you guys like. Like after, I think after like the first, you know, episode, you know, second episode, that he would probably been like, if he had been able to read those prior prior to coming on, then yeah, but. But Probably beforehand, like if he had just been like, hey, we need uh, would you be interested in being a producer for this show? These guys have never written anything like this before. <laughs> would you be down? He, yeah. yeah, probably. I, I, you know, like he said, he would like to say yes, but he there would be some definite trepidation before uh, jumping in. there. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, for sure. I, I had trepidation not knowing that because having never <laughs> worked with the three of you before. I didn't know what I was potentially getting myself into. Um, And so, you know, and let's be fair. I mean, none of you had directed audio dramas before. None of you had produced audio dramas or anything like that. And so I knew, I knew (laughs) that. And I knew that only Tara had some experience directing. Um, and, And so from that perspective, I knew that I probably wasn't going to want to bring in outside directors aside from the ones that had already been lined up. And so, you know, I, I was concerned and I will tell you early on when we first started producing episodes and recording episodes um, and, and we had decided that Tara would work as, as a director, I had no idea whether or not Tara was going to actually be good and I, I had concerns I because having never worked with Tara before, I I didn't know, and, and I was I was very impressed. Uh, I do think in the beginning, and I've said this to Tara before, uh, I do think that held back a little like, bit too much, maybe. Yeah. Um, well, but that's not the fair, case anymore. I, you know what? Never mind. There. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to step on anybody's toes. I felt like there was enough uh, direction. <laughs> there was too done. much direction at yeah. the beginning. Yeah, I, yeah. too many. Co- you know what yeah. I mean? I didn't want to, you know, mess up the stew. Too, too, so. There's too there's too many head chefs and not enough cooks, and that was the right, right. Yeah, I, I but, definitely uh, think you know, with a season two, yeah. the only directors that I would like to see working on season two would probably be. Tara and myself. Um, I, I think that um, if we keep it close to the vest and we keep it tight uh, like that, that we'll get the exact product that we're wanting. And, and I think that's important. I'm not against bringing out, bringing in outside talent in bringing in outside mm-hmm. directors, but I think right now with where we are, um, we know exactly what we want to achieve better than anyone else right oh yeah and and, I mean, and a lot of that has to do with we haven't aired any of the content yet right <laughs> i mean once <laughs> well, I, yeah. mean, I think i think if if you know, later on later on down the line if you know somebody who who has listened who actually i mean definitely would have to have some directing experience you know then they're like oh you know i've directed such and such and this that and the other thing and you know i'd really like to you know take a shot at directing a couple of these episodes. Oh, and I really enjoy the show, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Let's see what you got. But, you know, yeah, but I, I agree with you on that. Definitely, um, you know, you guys already know what you're looking for. Uh, I mean, I know working with Mark, I mean, because when we did, uh, I think my final recording, it was just me. It was me. Yeah. Uh, at Was it you, Tara? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We were all just kind of, we were all just kind of working and, and just getting it through. And it was like, uh, it was, it was, it was very easy because like Mark already knows me 
knows how I work. So it was so it was very easy to get that stuff done. So when you already know, OK, I know these people already in this in this case. Now, Tara, you've gotten to know, you know, a number of different people uh, just working on this. So it's like, OK, I know what they bring to the table. We can work with that. Yeah, so. for sure. And honestly, I, I think it'd be interesting um, if next season or not next season specifically, but like in the future, if any of the like the talent were like, oh, you know, I'd like to try a hand at directing an episode. I think that'd be interesting. I think that'd be cool to like, you know, work with somebody who is bringing the character to life, helping right. to usher in like the scene and guide that. I think that'd be pretty cool, too. Um, but yeah, we we worked we just worked so well together like like you said mark knows you and um in the same way that i think austin and i work well together as writers i think i work well together with mark as a director um yeah it's just you know it's just fun it, it, when it becomes yeah when it's when it's not that's what thing it wasn't really work it was just yeah. it, it was a lot of fun uh just you know just just kind of make because that's the thing that we don't like you said we don't have that expectation right now we we get to create this world that that we want to create you know it's 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 uh it, it's truly just it it's a work of heart because <laughs> you know the, there, is, oh, there, is, man. there is no money involved and so it basically it, it does it does uh it, it 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 shows that you know you actually really care about something when you're you know truly willing to do it for just for fun basically yeah. yeah definitely yeah um so uh before we kind of wrap this thing up if we will put a nice little a bow on it um and i am a little bit loosey-goosey i apologize i'm almost 64 <laughs> ounces in nice on white claws i'm joking no, no, uh, that was me. I only no. no. Okay, I was about no, to say. Man. I was about to say. I was about to say. He's on. Ooh, this yeah, is uh, this is El that, Segundo, uh, Steve Austin's Broken Skull, American Logger. American Logger. Don't oh, get it twisted. What? What? Um, <laughs> Stone Cold. So, uh, before we wrap the shindig up, obviously we've got some audience out there watching. I want to give them the opportunity if they have questions for the three of you or five of us because we're all involved in the show and uh obviously uh you know as we get closer to airing episode one of season one i anticipate bringing the talent the voice talent onto the show i'd love to bring on you know our composer uh roland um you know other people that are involved in the production probably even bring on scott at some point to from a consultant perspective you know how was this for you i think yeah. i think those are all great things i would definitely um, like to see what this cast looks like that's for sure <laughs> yeah i've only heard everybody yeah that yeah. that's gonna be fun yeah you know it's hard for me because uh, a lot of the people that are in the cast i have worked with in some capacity uh, aside from a couple uh yeah. you know jeff uh who who's playing the role of jason on this show i've worked with over secrets of heritage house our heart i worked with over on secrets of heritage house uh you know tyrus checking in again wants to know what is my name so <laughs> for those of you <laughs> listening watching uh tyrus does play the role of the sailor uh and in, in the script it says sailor so i believe that's your name um, but writers, uh, creator, last name. do you, do you have a name the for the sailor? He is the sailor, um, the mysterious man in the, in the back. Can we you... actually, we actually didn't come up with anything. Um, if I had to throw out something, Dave, Dave, Dave okay. Like so we're, ah! and, and to we're be in clear, Viking times right now, man. Remember to be clear, the Dave. sailor is from Dave, the North the sailor, area, yeah. man. Yes, they, what, they, the in, North uh, the year 10, 10 50 something, Dave. Yes, uh, Dave. first of his name. I, I thought we Delicious. were in the late 900s, but okay. Uh, Are we in the late Dave. 900s? I don't know. Oh, we're back. You should, you should go look and see when uh, Eric the Red lived. <laughs> I didn't uh, write it or anything. You know? No, no, no. So, okay. So, Dave, uh, Austin, would you agree with that name choice for the sailor? I, I think we have to Norse it up a little bit. Yeah. Da. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I gotta get, gotta get that Durr. delicious, 
Dav. Divine. Uh, Dav, yeah. Um, we, need, we need to get like a really, really, really stereotypical Norse name in there. <laughs> Chan, you got uh, anything? Door. Creator. Do- Did you say door? I mean, <laughs> Dave Taylor. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> da. Da, da. the sailor. Da. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, anytime you ask him a question, you say da. Uh, I mean, he gives the intern some names too. Uh, apparently, I thought we had. We're this. working on it. I I don't think I've heard. We are, we back were from everybody. We were arguing over yeah, some so names. Yes, there there were names given back back in the back back times. I believe written yeah. by by Austin specifically. Um, yeah. But those are not necessarily the official names. Oh, it was yeah. just a placeholder. They're just by headcanon. Yeah, exactly. yeah, and it's a good canon. I mean, if you want to give, if you want to put it in the official running, that's cool. I've already um, said, I've that, already said that I, 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 I would like to have a name. <laughs> yeah, because <Yeah. laughs> it, it, I mean, just not, it won't ruin anything because it's kind of an on-running joke that when we were actually supposed to say it, when we're we anytime our names are supposed to come out, we jump yeah. to the next scene. Yeah, it's like Master yeah. Chief's helmet. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler, thank you. 100%. I said it, I, just, I, it's, it's not, it doesn't ruin anything. It's just like anytime we were supposed to say it, it was. I just found that funny. It's a fun uh, running gag. So Very I good. should warn you, writers and creator, that never tell James any actual insight because uh. he is <laughs> he is that guy that will spoil just about right, anything. James, let me recite to you the entire script right now. All right. No. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> like Season two, movie go. Movie. Season 15, we were planning far ahead. Oh, man, I didn't even tell him we were at three already. I know. <laughs> Season 15, the planet um, is on fire. Um, Season 15, we have moved to a new planet. Um, Murphy has become the hive mind of a... <laughs> she has become yeah. the hive mind of a time-traveling network, and nothing is the same. The Vikings Ooh. have yeah, conquered the They've actually the broken day. time so much, there is no time. You know? It's all just space. Time is just a construct. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so going along with that, an actual serious question, Chan. Um, how how long would you like to see this show go on for? In in all reality, what is there a goal? Is there in a number uh, oh. of seasons or episodes and Stephanie kind of read my mind. How many seasons are you thinking of doing? Um, realistically, going from the... In my head, there is an end goal of how Murphy, uh, what his intentions are with, the, with his actions in the world. I would say we are a third there, including season two, so maybe six seasons, but you know, who knows? We can have spin off seasons in a movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, pulling back that curtain, there was a question asked. There was a question, asked, <laughs> was a question <laughs> asked earlier about oh my God, actually, know, yeah. <laughs> what we want to do with this show. And you know, the, the as I mentioned before, the truth of the matter is that I want everyone involved to make some money off of this. And and one of the ways of doing that is because I think we have a very talented cast as well as talented creative individuals you know we're we're looking at other options we are uh potentially going to be taking the the first couple of episodes and uh converting that to screenplay for a pilot um you know there there are things that we are doing in the background to to really take murphy's inc itself to to different heights um because a podcast is cool, an audio drama is cool, um, but I really think this concept here has legs and and really could do something fun. Oh yeah, legs. And there's other things that are in the works. You know, we again, you know, on Discord, we're constantly spitballing different ideas, and you know, uh, you come across different concepts, and you're like, oh, this sounds like it could be something interesting to do. Um, you know, and you you just never know when you're gonna where you're gonna go with it. Uh, I mean, do any of you feel limited in in where you could go with any content today? And having done this now, I mean, honestly, no, like I think the hard part is just getting like people behind it. You know, yeah. 
I mean, I've written like, more for this show than I've like <laughs> just the amount of debt. Yeah, I mean, it's it. I mean, it takes dedication. Like, yeah, there's like uh, you were saying earlier. Like, if you're working as on your own project, it's very easy to just put it off for later. Um, yeah, especially when I have uh, like if you got turned into script, you know, there is that kind of you know kick in the butt to like, hey, you know there's the show isn't gonna get off the ground if you don't write something you know yeah yeah it's a labor of love for sure uh, like you have yeah, to great want it. but it's yeah it's great though because like that also kind of motivates me more to write <laughs> i got other people yeah. waiting on me yeah exactly <laughs> yeah that's it's really that, what it is like, yeah, yeah. It's that, that additional, is, like, hey, you better get going, man. That That is the double-edged blade at this point, right? Because it's not just the four of us. We have four other writers. We have 10, 20 voice talent that, what are we doing? And, and you know, yeah. Austin earlier mentioned some of the difficulties we've had along the way. And Chan has mentioned some of the difficulties we've had along the way of having to go back and do re-records. Um, you know, we originally, uh, you know, again, spoiler, we originally had a male Murphy and we, we had to make a change. It's not because the voice actor that was portraying Murphy originally was bad. It just, no. it was not what, we needed for the show uh the voice actor extremely talented and i really hope we get to work with him at some point and i have challenged the writers to bring us something in season two where we can try and use him because man he 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 is extremely talented but we had to make a change and that required us going back and doing some re-records and and we actually re-recorded all of episode one and two over and and you know i think and uh, i i hope you the three of you would agree that we have a much stronger product coming out of the other side and yeah it was a setback but what do you think <laughs> most definitely better than the first time around yeah the first one was a little shaky for sure and it like through nobody's fault you know like specifically it's just like when it all comes together, it just came together a little rough. So we had to polish yeah. it up, redo it, you know? Yeah. And, and that is one of the things I will say, you know, coming in, I think in the beginning, somewhat hesitant and wanting to just trust the process rather than guide the process. Um, yeah. I myself probably could have been more headstrong from the beginning. Uh, and now I am. And now I feel more confident myself. So it, it it has been a growing process, I think, for all of us from from the uh, creative team, if you will. So um, so Chan, for you as the creator, um, and and that is his rap name, ladies and gentlemen, Chan the creator. Chan the creator. Um, yeah, watch out, twenty twenty three. 2023 going to yeah. be dropping them hot bars. Um, yeah. What hot fire for you <laughs> from a, a creative production, pre-production, post-production standpoint, um, what do you foresee as being the next big hurdle? Um, the biggest hurdle is really is just finding a way uh, like to make a schedule that can fit people from like that are in different time zones um <clears throat> part of the well the, i guess the next thing i foresee is just um how to get all the riders together and like you know have a process where you know once we get the ideas we get it from um from pen to paper and then just um, managing, I guess, um, how to accommodate uh, the good ideas and how to, uh, you know, know when to filter out uh, if something just doesn't feel right. I think those but, are all um, fair and valid points. Yeah. Yeah. James, 
this is the fat and black connection, not just the fat connection. Um, <laughs> so for you, uh, what questions do you have for the, the Murphy's Inc. production staff? No, I mean, you know what? Actually, I've just kind of enjoyed listening, seeing what's going on, man. Because, like, like uh, you know, this is I, I've heard your voices like we talked about. I've heard your voices. But, you know, now seeing you guys, it's uh, it's like, OK, now I know what they look like putting that putting that uh, face to voice. But no, I mean, like I said, I've truly loved I've truly loved what what has come out so far. Um, I'm 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 definitely just really excited to to see what's coming for, you know, you know, my character, you know, seeing what's <laughs> coming for the other characters in the show. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, it, this has been, it's probably been the most fun I've had working on a project in some time. I mean, also, cause it is one of the first projects I've worked on in a while. So, <laughs> um, but no, because it's, it truly, it's one of those things that I'm, original cast now you know what i'm saying like OG. So, uh, yeah OG. so yeah, so you know like you know i i you know that's 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 really excited to be in on the ground level like this so you know i'm just i'm great i'm grateful to ha even have the opportunity um to work with you guys on 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 the back end of after you guys do all the all the uh all the legwork so you know, but I does it be working with Phil Collins though? Oh yeah, I don't know, I, <laughs> Brian. Brian, we need we need you to check in at some yeah. point. You know, down the road. <laughs> How does uh, that feel? Comparing working with the Murphy's Inc. team versus working with Phil Collins. I mean, yeah, that's two different. That's 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 two different beasts. <laughs> no, thanks. I will that's, never try to compare myself to Phil Collins at this stage of my life. I, that's like, I'm sorry. That's that's like yeah. two hearts. Yeah. 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 With just one mind. With just one mind. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, and and Brian, ball, Brian does respond. Well, Phil was going through a divorce at the time. Oh, one yeah. of them. One of the the couple he's had. Yes. Yeah, so that's probably a fun time to work with somebody so let's like do that. A, uh, let's do a uh, <laughs> final check in. Let's. Let's try and wrap this thing down at two hours. I oh, think nice. that's fair. Um, and Brian does say, and I did get to meet Lily Collins during. So oh, he, he met daughter. the daughter of Phil. So yes. did you get to date Lily Collins? I actually don't know how old she was at the time. So nah, that's that probably, might be that's completely a, inappropriate. That is question. inappropriate. I don't even uh, know. Speaking if she of was daughters, 18, Nick Lily's yeah. daughter? Walk on thin ice right now. Yo, buddy. yo, that. <laughs> That is a true okay, statement, right? When there. we when we do okay, our when we do our wrestling say. when we do a wrestling oh, episode, oh Tara, we'll bring okay. you on. Yeah. And, yeah. and Lily Collins is seventeen at the time. So. Yeah, so that's yeah. not okay. <laughs> that's well, not okay. You're on there, but uh, I did not know she was seventeen. So, uh, <laughs> wait, well, hold on though, because what <laughs> what state? Because New Mexico, oh yeah, thirteen oh, is no. the age of consent. So, oh no, seventeen. If you start, if you start well, talking about, well, hey, by the, but, by but the what about standard? the state? What about the no. state though? <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah. Not go there. let's not go down that by road. By the All internet right. standards, the yeah, ice is breaking it. right now, Mark. Yeah. Let's 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 wrap this thing up before it goes too far off <laughs> the, the rails. Bears are loose. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> yeah right. this is this is this is starting to get crazy right now. Austin, for you, <laughs> any yes. closing thoughts before we wrap it up? I have no thoughts. Anything you want to share with Good. the audience? Anything? Oh, else? um, yeah. I mean, watch out for it. It's going to be releasing hopefully very soon, and I can't wait for something that I worked on to finally be out there in the public. Tara? Yes, um, all we ask for, audience, is your continued love and support. And um, that's about it. That's about it. Well, maybe love some support. fan art, too, but, you know. Yeah. Give us fan art. Yeah. <laughs> we want fan it. art, indeed. <laughs> Chan, closing thoughts? Um, so aside from the mixtape, uh, watch out for Murphy Zinc uh, coming soon. <laughs> um, ready to see it in your phones, um, whatever, whatever you listen for. But yeah, watch out. And and uh, one last question for you, Chan, just because I have to know, um, what are you chewing? Because 
pretty much throughout the whole episode, you you have been eating something. I got to know what it is. It's Vegemite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's just uh, Vegemite gum. Vegemite oh. gum? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> just enjoy pain. Gum. Just gum. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, we'll 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 just trust you that it's gum. Um, James, do you have any closing thoughts, last minute questions you want to ask any of the production staff before we wrap it up? No, nah, man, I'm just uh, you know, and and still my mind is still kind of blown. A, how young you guys are, but then also like what like this is your first time writing a script, and it has been, I mean, just what you guys came up with was bonkers. So. Um, I'm just really excited to see where season two goes and, and onward. So, um, I, I appreciate you guys, you know, taking the time to come on and, 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 uh, share with us tonight too. So I really appreciate you guys doing that and, uh, you know, letting our audience get to know you guys a little bit better and, uh, know what's coming up. So, yeah. yeah and thank you for, having us. for sure. Thank you. Last minute thought for me is uh, I, I think one of the things that I look forward to uh, is airing episode one a- into season one and and bringing on some of the voice talent from the show to, to join us here at Fat and Black Connection. But also, I think uh, well-deservedly so would be a um, watch slash listen party uh, for each oh. episode as they happen. And, oh. and and us doing some additional content uh, as those episodes drop, bringing in uh, each of you back and, and talking about the episodes specifically as the content drops, bringing in the voice talent. Um, I think that could be a lot of fun. Yes, so uh, I, I hope uh, that each of you have enjoyed this experience with us and, and we'll definitely be back in the near future. Hell yeah! If you'll have me, <laughs> I guess when we when we talk wrestling, we definitely gonna have to have Tara back. <laughs> yes, yes, I've got well, so many wrestling opinions. We can do it. <laughs> For sure. For well, sure. with all of that, I I appreciate you joining us. I I have, uh, you know what, James? This might be the first time. Oh boy. Okay. This might be the first time I'm going to say it. It's been real. Oh, no. it's, oh, it's been fun. Uh-huh. Oh, And you know what? Yeah. As a matter of fact, it hasn't been real fun. Ah, oh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, he got it. He got it. Yep. Yeah. Right. Uh, Good job, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, again, um, thank you, Tara. <laughs> thank you, Austin. And thank you, Chan, the creator. 